remember those PlayStation demo discs? That's how I was introduced to the Clock Tower series. It wasn't until a couple years ago I learned there was a Super Famicom release of Clock Tower. I finally put down some hours into trying it out, so let's get to discussing this game. Clock Tower is a point-and-click survival horror game. The game originally was only available in Japan on the Super Famicom, though you can find English translations online. It initially was not playable with a mouse either, so you would point-and-click using just the D-pad. However, there is a hack that allows you to play with the mouse, called Clock Tower Deluxe. I highly recommend if you play on one, play on that version. I'll do my best to keep spoilers at a minimum, but uh, no promises. You play as an orphan named Jennifer. You, as well as a few other orphan girls, get adopted by the wealthy Barrows family. Shortly after arriving inside their mansion, things start going very wrong, and you're on your own inside this creepy mansion. As you try to piece together what's happening and where the other girls disappeared to, you run into a mysterious figure known as Scissor Man. He clearly doesn't care for that adage, don't run with scissors. This game is all about the atmosphere. It's very unsettling only hearing your footsteps. Then, the Scissor Man is coming music kicks in suddenly, and it's freak the fuck out time! Unlike Resident Evil and other survival horror games, you don't have any weapons here. You need to find somewhere to hide, and quick. Scissor Man can appear from anywhere, and it's easy to get cornered. At least continuing after death brings you back to the same room. Then you can figure out a better way to handle it next time. Like try shoving this bookcase down on him. There's a bunch of jump scares in this game as well. I'm generally not easy to scare, but man, this game got to me at times. Clock tower? More like anxiety tower, am I right? You're already on edge, and as you check on some seemingly innocent object in the room, you might be in for a deadly surprise. Nothing is safe. If you can't get into the atmosphere of this game, you're probably not going to like it. There really isn't any other game like it on the system, though. Its design is intended to make you feel helpless. You don't have direct control over Jennifer. You just move the cursor and direct her on what to do. It's like yelling at a character in a horror movie, No! Don't go in there! It can be very unresponsive at times. Jennifer also walks painfully slowly, especially up and down stairs. At least with the deluxe hack, you can run on the stairs. I wish there was a hack to add a map as well. It is way too easy to get lost in this giant mansion. The other major gripe I have with the game is the way that the puzzles work. You need to interact with them the designer intended way, in order, or else. Also, interacting with some objects do not have predictable effects, like here with the mirror. It can either be harmless sometimes, or you can be getting choked out. If you have an awful experience with your initial interaction, you may never want to try it again. But some essential items to escape this mansion are hidden in these. You just need to try everything, and then repeat them again if you're still stuck. This also leads me to my last point on this game, replayability. There's a lot of randomness at play here, most of it for the better though. Every playthrough will be different. Scissorman will show up in different spots, the keys will be located elsewhere, and your interactions with your environment will differ as well. And depending on your choices throughout, there are several endings for this game. All in all, if you're into horror, you really should just give Clock Tower on the SNES a shot. It's a gripping unique experience and perfectly fitting for Halloween. Happy Halloween everyone! Enjoy all that sweet, sweet candy, and uh, stop running with scissors, okay?